Hello, hello, I'm Kim Trappen, and this is this week's episode of Free Live Business Coaching. Um, coming in a few minutes later than normal, and didn't announce this, so we're just gonna roll with it because there's a lot about manifesting. Um, you may already be a believer in manifesting, you may be skeptical of manifesting. <clears throat> I fell into the camp early on, excuse me, <clears throat> where I was really skeptical of manifesting. I actually, at one point in time, thought that manifesting and mindset work was for people that didn't understand how to build a strategy. And then I progressed and I used to tell people I'm one woo, not two, like I'm not woo woo. And the more research that I started doing around this, my eyes started to open up that manifesting is not some like secret woo woo thing that people don't understand. There is actual research and science behind it. So I wanted to come in and share that with you. Regardless if you do or do not believe in mindset, I think this information is really powerful for you to understand and really see that it's not just, I don't know, it's not just this out there woo woo spiritual thing. There is actual science behind it. So I personally have a tool that I developed that I use with my clients when we are working on hitting their goals. I call it the belief grid. You'll see me sharing about it in this group. And I used these core principles to build the belief grid. So these are in no particular order. I just flipped out my notes um, from many moons ago now to be able to share with you guys the foundations of what mindset work and manifesting are really built on. So number one, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is really identifying and managing your emotions. So what they say, um, and I'm just going to see if I have his name written down here, the person that is, Daniel Goleman is credited, he developed the five branches of emotional intelligence. Empathy, self-awareness, self-management, self-motivated, and social awareness. Those are his five branches of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is even something used in education in the school systems, right? They have like EI rooms for kids that have emotional troubles. So what they say is that when you increase your emotional intelligence, you increase decision-making, performance, personal well-being, and you decrease stress and anxiety. <clears throat> Excuse me, my allergies today are really getting to me. So emotional intelligence is one of these like foundational beliefs, these foundational um, systems behind manifesting. And I'm going to pull it all together for you at the end and explain why. But just understand that emotional intelligence is a real system and process and there's a science to it, even though we're looking at regulating things like our emotions. The next one is cognitive behavioral therapy. One of my clients actually clued me into this. She is a psychologist. And when I was using my tool with her and showing her my tool, she was like, oh my God, Kim, did you know this is like, puts a structure to cognitive behavioral therapy? And I was like, no, I did not actually know that. And so I started researching it and I was like, oh yes. So cognitive behavioral therapy is a type of therapy in which negative thought patterns about yourself and the world I looked up the definition. Negative thought patterns about yourself in the world are challenged to alter unwanted behavior patterns or treat mood disorders. So this is a specific type of therapy that therapists use with clients to alter the negative thoughts that they're having about themselves in the world to disrupt those patterns and create something new in their life, which sounds very similar to the law of attraction. The law of attraction, when I Googled what the actual definition of it was, like the first time I ever heard about law of attraction was like back in the Oprah days and the secret was like the big book and everybody was talking about it. I looked up the actual definition of law of attraction and the definition states that it is a principle or belief that says a positive or negative thought will bring positive or negative experiences into a person's life. So think about that. Law of attraction is saying that a positive or negative thought is going to bring positive or negative experiences. Cognitive behavioral therapy, a type of therapy used by a psychologist, is a type of therapy in which they change the negative thoughts that you have about yourself in the world to alter unwanted behaviors or outcomes. They're saying the same thing. 
right? Both law of attraction and cognitive behavioral therapy are talking about how powerful your thoughts are and how it's creating these results for you. And then we throw in the emotional intelligence, which again, to recap, says that when you increase your emotional intelligence, you increase decision-making performance and personal well-being, and you decrease stress and anxiety. When you look at those three pieces together, and then let's talk about neuroscience. Neuroscience is the study of the brain. So if you haven't researched the brain before, what happens when we learn something or we think something is we actually have these neural pathways that form inside the brain. So if you grew up being told that you're worthless and you're not gonna amount to anything, you have a really, you may form a really strong neural pathway in your brain that constantly tells you you're worthless and you're not going to amount to anything, right? So somebody may end up in therapy, love therapy, I think it's amazing. Somebody may end up in therapy and under cognitive behavioral therapy techniques, that therapist may be guiding them into changing those thoughts. You actually do have control over all of the thoughts that go through your brain. Now, some parts of the brain are wired to keep you alive. This lower part, we call it the lizard brain because it's literally the amygdala, it's the same part of the brain that even lizards have that is wired, that's why animals scurry, wild animals scurry when people get close. The amygdala fires and is like, I sense danger, run. Okay, so we have these really primitive parts of our brain still. So sometimes your brain goes into autopilot with these really primitive thoughts and you just react, fight, flight, or freeze. Okay, those are the common responses that we learn about. So if you're walking down a dark alley and you're like, oh my God, I think somebody's behind me, fight, flight, or freeze. You're not thinking with the executive functioning portion of your brain. And when we look at neuroscience, when we talk about how the brain is wired, when we talk about changing our thoughts, it can physically feel difficult to change the thoughts in your mind because your brain has to develop new neural pathways. It is not an overnight thing. So many people, my prior self included, Think that mindset work is something where, well, I just, I said some mantras and it didn't work. Okay, it's more than that. You are literally rewiring how your brain is operating so that you can start to like remove and diminish and get rid of these thoughts that are holding you back and start to develop new thoughts, start to develop a new neural pathway in your brain. And when we pull all these things together, emotional intelligence, neuroscience, cognitive behavioral therapy, law of attraction, this is what mindset work looks like. It is so much more than just memorizing a mantra or choosing a word for the year. I love, I, I chose a word of the year for several years in a row, but it's more than just that. Be, and that's why some people can choose a word of the year and they can say all the positive mantras and they're like, nothing changed. When you experience that, Nothing changed because likely you were trying to cram those thoughts into your brain, but you hadn't actually done the work to rewire how your brain is currently wired. And we all have the capability of changing the way our brain is wired. I always pronounce it wrong, but that's what neuroplasticity is. Neuroplasticity says that it is possible to change your brain even as an adult. Okay, that definition I wrote down is we can grow and change our brains into adulthood. We can rewire the neural pathways that regulate our emotions, our thoughts, and our reactions. So all of this combined is what mindset work really is. And when we do mindset work, this is how we manifest what we want to achieve. It is more internal, and it is oftentimes feels harder. Like I literally have had days in the past where I'm like, my brain worked so hard today. Like my supercomputer is tired. My brain did so much thinking today. Manifesting. I love it. Have a journal, right? This is my, this journal is specific for things that come to me from meditation. Should do a live stream about that too. There's a science behind meditation. Okay, there's a science behind it of what is actually happening in your brain when you slow the body down and you start accessing different parts of the brain. But when you think about manifesting what you want, you have to go inward. You have to. It is so much more than mantras and words. Those things can help you start to see another way. They can help you to um, 
start to understand that maybe if your your brain is offering up a lot of thoughts that aren't serving you, then maybe finding somebody else's mantra helps you see it from another angle. So there is still value and power in doing things like mantras, but the work to manifest what you want is so much deeper than just a mantra. To manifest what you want, it's twofold. It starts with rewiring the brain. I shouldn't even say it starts with, it's really done in tandem. So the work to rewire your brain, the work to believe new beliefs about yourself, about your business, about your goals, about what you believe to be possible and probable, okay, there's that piece of it. And then when you really start believing those things, the actions that you take in your business and in your life carry so much more power, so much more power. And it's really this combination of what you believe to be true and what you're doing that manifest what you want in life, right? I'm not even the same person that I was five years ago, working in corporate, hating my every single day that I spent there, hating the commute. I am not even the same person that I was back then because my brain has literally changed. Right? It doesn't mean I become a better or worse person, but the way I think about things is wildly different now. I see things from a 360 degree view, meaning I can see things from all angles. I can see things from all perspectives. My brain is no longer wired to just see like, oh, I just have to get up and I have to work a job I hate and I have to do a commute and I have to not talk back to my bosses and I have to be a good employee and I have to, have to, have to. So I was like, oh, wait, I have choices. There are always opportunities out there. I get to choose what I believe to be true, and then I get to create my actions out of that place of belief. That's what manifesting really looks like. And I think early in my journey, the part of the reason I didn't understand this is because I didn't see people explaining the science behind it. I didn't take the time because my brain was so convinced that manifesting was this woo-woo thing where if I just write it down, it should happen. And if it doesn't, then it means it doesn't work. And what we believe to be true, confirmation bias, we all have them. Confirmation bias is when you specifically seek out evidence to support what you already believe to be true. So in my mind, I believed that manifesting was kind of a bunch of garbage. So I didn't seek out any evidence to the contrary. I didn't look up what manifesting really means. I didn't start learning about how the brain is wired. I didn't learn how important our thoughts are to creating our results because it affects everything going on around us. One of the examples that I love, I don't, I don't know where I originally heard this, um, probably several people, but one of the examples that I love, when we even talk about like human beings, our bodies literally have a frequency that we give off. It is measurable by scientists. It is measurable. And when I heard somebody explain it, I'm like, oh, I, I, like, I know that feeling. Have you ever walked into a room and you've met somebody new and maybe he or she gives you the creeps, makes you uncomfortable, and they haven't even said much yet? But you're like, are they just carry this? You're like, gosh, as soon as they walked in the room, the energy changed, right? Like the energy came down or they lifted the energy. Maybe they have a really amazing um, vibration that comes in. When I heard it explained that way and I was like, oh, yes, I have experienced that. I can think of specific points in my life where somebody walking into the room and their energy came in, wildly shifted for better or for worse, but it wildly shifted what was going on in that room at that time. I've also had, have you ever been able to, like, I've had this with my kids. I remember when they were younger and I was napping on the couch and suddenly I'd like startled awake. Like I could feel that somebody was looking at me and there's like a kid right here, like right in front of my face, staring at me as I'm sleeping. I could physically feel that somebody was looking at me, right? It doesn't make sense to the logical brain to think about how I was asleep. My eyes were closed right? Or you feel somebody behind you and you kind of turn around and you're like, oh yeah, there they are, right? A lot of that is because of the vibration that we give off and we can feel those things. And again, it's measurable. Scientists can measure the vibration, the frequency of the vibration that your body gives off. And it makes sense too when we think about, right, like our heart is beating. What happens if the heart stops beating? They shock you. They give you an electrical current because our bodies are already electrical. 
So I wanted to come in and talk a little bit about that. I think this has given me some more ideas for some more, um, maybe add some things on here too, to, um, yeah, this is gonna be fun, guys. We're gonna have more conversations about manifesting what you want, about these principles behind it. If you have any questions about this, don't be embarrassed. This is a safe space. You can drop any questions that you have. Maybe you tried manifesting and it didn't work for you. Let's talk about it. Why didn't it work? There is a reason that it's not working and it usually starts up here, right? Because if you don't believe it's going to work, you haven't really changed those thoughts yet. So it can start to feel a little bit like a chicken in the egg and I don't want you to get lost in that. I want everybody in this group having their most successful years yet in 2022. Um, drop me any questions if you have them. And again, remember, you can always go out to my website. If you're not on my email list, get on my email list. You will get at least weekly doses of tips and inspiration and a behind the scenes look at scaling six figure and beyond business. So you can go to kimthebusinesscoach.com backslash free dash gift, or just go to kimthebusinesscoach.com and you will see the free gift tab. That will get you onto my email list when you fill out your info there. And if you'd like to talk about coaching together, just send me a DM comment below this, um, or you can see the free call, the consult tab on my website as well. All right. If you're just catching this now, catch the replay. This is the gold of how manifesting actually works and the science behind it. Bye ladies.